Now, from the makers of Cold Water Oma. Yeah, the window's the third one from the top, isn't it, please? That's right. Okay, here it goes. The man called Maskin grabbed his window cleaning gear and began to climb the ladder he'd propped against the red bricked wall of the ministry. Just a window cleaner at work. No one gave him a second glance. A short while after that, John Steed's telephone rang. John Steed? Uh, Mr. Steed Peters here from the ministry. Oh, yes, please. There's photographs that Mrs. Beale dropped in. I've got them on the projector. And, uh, just a moment. Uh, there's someone at the. Ah! Hello? Hello, oh, Peters. Peters, what is it? What's happened? Trouble, Steed. It sounds like it. It sounds like big trouble, Mother. In fact, it sounds like murder. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. There is no dirt that can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. And Mrs. Bodington is one of them. My wash is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of it. My husband particularly wears a lot of white plain bows and his clothing always looks delightful. There's nothing like cold water Omo. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Cold water Omo is the washing powder that cleans best. Keep your complexion soft and young looking with the creamy moisturizing lather of Lux. Like Claudia Cardinale, choose Lux. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. <laughs> Episode 3 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel look into the window cleaning business in the odd case of The Super Secret Cycle Snatch. John Steed and Emma Peel were investigating the murder of Arthur Jarrett, a top ministry security agent of MI12. Jarrett had disappeared while checking on the security at the British Cipher headquarters. Steed had called at the headquarters and been puzzled to find that all the staff denied ever seeing Jarrett. But Mrs. Peel, checking with Ferret, a forensic expert, had discovered Jarrett's body in the window seat of his own apartment. Later, from the evidence of Jarrett's miniature camera, it was clear that he had visited the cipher headquarters. Mrs. Peel had passed over some photographs to Peters, the photographic expert at the ministry, and it was while Peters was making a phone call to Steed to report on his findings that Steed heard a shot ring out. He didn't need any urging from Mother to get over to the Ministry at top speed, collecting Mrs. Peel on the way. This way, Mrs. Peel. Wow, what a shambles. The whole place is wrecked. Yeah, someone made sure of this, all right. They made sure of Peters, too. Look there on the floor. He's dead, all right. Mm. Shot through the window. Yes, yeah, looks like it. Glass over everywhere. The projector he was using has been smashed to pieces. Yes. Hey, look at this. A tray containing charred ashes. Ashes of the photographs I gave him. So they were important. Must have been. Got in by the window, having shot Peters just as he was making his report to me. Mm. He got in by climbing this ladder. It's still here. Poor sight. It's not every assassin who carries his own ladder. In broad daylight, too. They seem to get away with quite a few things in broad daylight. Especially murder. Sheer audacity. Right. Peters didn't have time to tell us what he'd found. Well, at least we're on the right track. And we've still got the negatives. Then we can make more prints. Precisely. Would you care to join me in my dark room, Mrs. Peel? You think it's safe? Oh, I shouldn't think so. You've seen my etchings before, anyway. Why not my bromide papers? Well, as long as they aren't too overexposed. Shall we go? Mrs. Peel climbed nimbly through the window and, gripping the ladder with the inside of her feet, slid swiftly down to the pavement. No end to that woman's talents. <laughs> Steed's 
department, Mother was sampling a dry sherry and talking to George Webster of Cypher HQ on the telephone. Yes, George, old boy, I'm afraid it is serious. Jarrett is dead. Terribly sorry to hear that, Mother, but um, you're really partly our responsibility. We didn't know him, you know. That's not what MI-12 say. Not to the devil with them. They're always wishing things onto others. Dark places are law unto itself. To lose a man or two and think it's got to be someone else's fault and not their own carelessness. I repeat, we've all got our own jobs to... It's the security angle that worries them. Your place supplies all the codes of the country. Anyone penetrating your security gets information on all other departments. We know that. That's why our security is so good. Can't be broken. And if I told you I had photographs taken in your own office only yesterday... I'd say you were stark raving mad. Hmm. A bit bitter. What's that? Uh, Of course I'd be bitter. I'm talking about Sherry. All right, George, old boy, if you're sure you're right, then of course I have to take your word for it. I know I am, Mother. Thanks for the call. If I can help in any way, let me know. Bye. Bye. One of us is a blithering idiot, and it's not me. And this is a most inferior Sherry. I shall have to go home to get a decent drink. I'll just fix them and then you can turn the light on. Right. Let's take a keen look. Mm. Blot them off. Leave them to dry naturally. There we are. Magnifying glass. Hmm. Nary a clue in sight. There has to be one somewhere. Steve, this one, the exterior of the courtyard, right outside the cipher headquarters. Look, there in the corner, a van with ladders on the roof. Ladders, Steve. Clever girl. I think I can just make out the lettering on the side of the van. Mm-hmm. Classy glass cleaners. Window cleaners? Again? Ladders? In broad daylight? You expect a visitor? Oh, not that I know of. Mother will see to it. But Mother, in his wheelchair, merely raised his voice and said, Come in. Ah, the formidable ferret from forensics. Come in and close the door. I'm allergic to drafts and rodents. <laughs> Hello, Mother. Uh, Steed and Mrs. Peel here. In there. Mother indicated the kitchen with a gesture of his glass. Uh, cooking up something, or rather something is uh, developing in there. Huh? Uh, what? I hate to think. Uh, you're on duty, of course, Ferret? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, I suppose I am. Too bad. I know how strict your department is about drinking. Um, well, actually, I... I no, don't I don't think, think you should either. Oh, hello there, Ferret. What's new? Ferret is on duty and not drinking. That's new. I presume, Ferret, that your department is now in a state of complete panic. Yeah, pretty nearly. First Jarrett and now Peters. Quite. Status quo, complete panic. What are you planning to do about it? Turn to us once again? Uh, Well, the fact is, uh, we thought we should put someone else in to cipher headquarters. Put someone else in? I see. They seem to have been all prepared to deal with Jarrett. Webster denies it, of course. I think his mind is going. Getting too old. Peter used to play quite a good rubber of bridge in his day. Introduce who went to cipher headquarters, Ferret? Uh, well, uh, this time it would have to be clandestine. Of course, there's someone from outside our department who's completely trustworthy. Ah, then it would have to be someone outside, of course. Yes, someone who could move in smoothly without creating undue attention. Yeah, of course, the position will qualify for the five shillings a day danger allowance. But... Who could refuse that? Who exactly do they have in mind? Uh, well, you, Mrs. Peel, to start tomorrow. Me? But I... Yeah, that is, uh, of course, if Mother allows it. Oh, but of course, of course. <laughs> Mustn't forget that extra five shillings a day, eh, Steve? Well, it's hard to refuse. Yes. Only one condition, Mrs. Peel. And that is? You use your extra income to buy Steve some decent sherry. Well, I'm all for that. I have none left, I know. And just what will you be doing, Steve, while I'm at Cypher HQ? Me? Oh, well, if it's a fine day tomorrow, I think, um... I think I may have my windows cleaned. That's an idea, isn't it? It was a fine day, and John Steve looked up the address of classy glass cleaning in the telephone book and called upon their premises. 
Good morning, sir. Good morning. Lava is the name. Charles Lava. Uh, John Steed, I'm looking for a window cleaner. Oh, well, then, look no further. At classic glass, the world is our window. Just observe our thoroughness, sir. Look at our trainee. Lava motioned to three young men who were practicing on ladders, cleaning away like fury at huge panes of glass. Anticlockwise, James. Now, anticlockwise. Always anticlockwise. Uh, perhaps, the, sir, they will try the easy way, though. Oh, can't be too careful. Exactly. Uh, uh, there are no shortcuts to uh, the tops of our ladders. Uh, here we really care about windows. I'm delighted to hear it. Oh, beautiful, Wilson, beautiful. Lovely touch with the lever. Just a shade more wrist action. There's a good lad. We only use the finest camel skins, you know, Mr. Steed. Camel skins? They hold twice as much water. Oh, of course, yes. And now, we offer three services. Wash and dry, cream shampoo with a hot air finish, and our deluxe spirit treatment with a full leather glazing and crystal clear finish. Nothing but the best. Oh, splendid. Uh, I book for you for our deluxe. And now, uh, approximately... <laughs> Howard! Uh, I have told you before, Howard, the bucket in your left hand, held loosely but firmly at the right angles to your hip, the hip boy. Now, all together, that's better. There you go. I'm so sorry, Mr. Steed. Approximately how many windows will you require treatment? Approximately uh, one. One? Uh, family seat. I have the rest of them boarded up. Boarded up? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Steed. We have a duty to our employees. The sight of all those boarded windows. Well, we had named crack on the list. Oh, it is a pity. I'm only just round the corner from one of your regular clients. The Cypher Headquarters and Ministry of Defence. The Cypher Headquarters? Oh, why, I don't recall. Ah, yes, I remember now. Of course, double glazed with moulded frames. Ghastly. But we haven't touched it for months. We used to have the contract, but we gave it up. Uneconomical. Besides, all that grave, that's quite so strong. Oh, I see. Uh, but uh, if you ever decide to reopen your windows... Well, you'll be the first to know. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Steed. Uh, now, boys, left hand from the hip, please. From the hip. Steed left and got into his car. As he pulled away, a small van came from the back of the building and followed him. Watch that driving mirror, Steed. Watch it. <laughs> Alert, Sam Lacey finishes washing his dog in just 17 minutes, 45 seconds. Well done, Sam. Play any other sports? I left a pint of beer now and then. You look very fresh, Sam. What deodorant do you use? Shield for sportsmen, of course. Why? It works. Shield for sportsmen deodorant won't stick, sting, or stain. In aerosol or roll-on, it's made to keep sportsmen cool and dry. Think what it can do for you. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user, like Mrs. Bodington. The my wash is beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. There's nothing like cold water OMO. No dirt can stand up to OMO. Over a million housewives have proved it. It cleans best. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.